Welcome to Gab Talk, where we provide tools, tips, and techniques to help your life and business be easier, better, and faster. Hello, hello, everybody. Welcome to the next episode of Gab Talk Success Tips with Experts. I am Gabriella, and today I am super excited. I get to bring to you Jay Fairbrother. I met him and I was so impressed with his story. I could not wait to get to interview him. How are you doing today, Jay? Hi, Gab. Great to be here. Thanks for having me. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. All right. So you and I have had a chance to talk. And as I said, I am so excited to be able to bring you to our audience. Can you please share with us what it is that makes you the expert that you are? <laughs> So um, I work with entrepreneurs because I've been an entrepreneur for the last 30 years, and um, I'm currently on my ninth business, which if you do the math, you can figure out pretty quickly that that just means I've failed as spectacularly as I have succeeded. Uh, so in, in those businesses, I have bootstrapped them, I have bought them, I've sold them, uh, and grown them you know, to a couple hundred employees. So it's been a journey. Wow, that's amazing. So we all have a background and a history that we go through things that lead us to success and bring us to the level of expertise that we are. You were telling me the story of your background. Will you please share that with our audience? Yeah, there's there's a couple of key points to it, I guess. Um, so like most entrepreneurs, when I first when I started my first company, um, you know, it's always about growth. It's more leads, more clients, more revenue. And that also creates more problems, more headaches, more complexity, more overhead. And so I found myself, you know, I grew my first business, I got to 50 employees, and I, you know, kind of thought, well, I was, my ego was pretty happy. And then I got to 5 million in sales, and I kind of thought I was a hotshot. But at, even at that, I still wasn't making that much money. I was barely making six figures. I hadn't had a vacation in five years. Uh, you know, my business was literally killing me. And so fortunately, I figured some things out. And by I got it to 200 employees. We were very profitable. And I sold that business uh, successfully. And um, so, it, you know, now my focus is to try to help people get out of that growth rut and, and help them learn how to profitably scale their business. Um, and so that was part, that was the successful part of the story. And then the other uh, part of the journey that I share with you is that apparently I'm a, a, a decent entrepreneur, but a terrible investor because in, after the 2008, 2010 financial crisis, I lost everything. And I mean, literally I didn't even own a car at the end of it. And I went from being a multi-millionaire living in a mansion to living in my friend's basement. Um, so it was uh, quite the roller coaster. And you know, part of my journey is is crawling my way uh, slowly out of that basement and and back into the world and reinventing myself and and hanging my shingle now as a business advisor and business consultant. Wow, that is quite the story. Oh my goodness. And now today you are working with quite a few people that are six and seven figure because you've been that seven figure earner and you know what it takes to get there. And I am so, so happy to hear that you have managed to, as you put it, crawl your way out of that space and are working with the kind of people that are successful and trying to become successful like myself. I am excited that you and I get to work with each other. So will you please let us know where it is that you take inspiration and who influences you when you're working with the people to teach and train them to be better entrepreneurs? Yeah, that's an easy one for me because my answer is other entrepreneurs. Um, so I was involved in an organization called the Entrepreneurs Organization. It used to be called Young Entrepreneurs back when we were all young. And I was, in, I, I was involved in that um, here in Pittsburgh for, I was on the board for a decade and president twice and involved in that organization for even longer. And part of what you get in that organization is, is the opportunity to meet with, four, we call them peer, forum peer groups, where a group of nine to 10 entrepreneurs get together every month for a three or four hour meeting and your sole purpose is to help each other grow your businesses and become better entrepreneurs. 
and I've been in many of those peer groups over the last 25 years, and they've had the most impact on me than anything else I've ever done as an entrepreneur, you know, any conference course, books, a- anything, I, I've just had so much more impact. So, so my answer to the question is just hanging out with other entrepreneurs who are all going through the same struggles as you are, you know, and, and, and that's the one thing when you start working with entrepreneurs, you start to realize is we all have the same problems. We have people problems, we have cash flow problems, we have sales and marketing problems, we have process problems. That's universal to any business, no matter the size and scope or industry. And it's just learning from other people's mistakes and your own uh, to to go through. And and so um, that's been my biggest influence. And fortunately, I'm involved with an organization now called Global Leaders Organization, or we call it GLOW. And we offer the exact same things I'm talking about with the opportunity to get involved in these small forum peer groups, um, where to me that you know, is, is the place that you get the most impact from. Absolutely. And you and I spoke about the fact that um, I'm working on launching a group community myself, and we have uh, several times a month where we get together and we actually work out the concerns around problems that we, somebody brings to the table, we work on finding solutions in a very similar model to what you have described, which is, I personally think is one of the best ways to help solve your concerns as an entrepreneur, because literally, as you just said, everybody has a version of the same kinds of concerns. And so knowing that other people are dealing with the same issues and how they've solved them helps everybody. So I just, I absolutely love, love that model myself. I'll give you one little tip on on those types of groups that that I learned the hard way as well, that um, what, you know, entrepreneurs are typically type A personalities and we don't like to be told what to do. (laughs) <laughs> and so when you're working in those ty- types of communities of other entrepreneurs, it's really important not for any one person to get on a soapbox and, and talk down to any other entrepreneur. The key to making that, that so impactful is true respect for each other. And, and I always start community meetings like that saying, look, <clears throat> for the next two hours that we're in this space, it doesn't matter the size of your business or the size of your bank account. For the next two hours, we're all equals. So awesome. I love that. Hello, hello, awesome listener. Thank you so much for joining us today at Gab Talk Success Tips from Experts. We're going to take a short break and take a moment to thank our sponsors. It is because of their generous support that we are able to bring to you all of these amazing experts where we're able to interview them and get their best success tips for you. So please take a listen to what our sponsors have to say. Ever wish you had a generous, wealthy uncle? Well, this Gab Talk sponsor may be the next best thing. If you've ever found yourself wishing some successful person would willingly invest their time, energy, and money in you to help you crawl out of the drudgery of your life, then this is your lucky day. Most people will ignore this. They'll think it's too good to be true. But if you'll pay attention, you may just discover that he is the guy. And as you might imagine, this is exactly why I've been asked not to reveal his identity. If I did, he would surely be overwhelmed by countless people sending in their sob stories in hopes of getting a handout. Well, he can't help everybody. He's not a charity. He's a business philanthropist, and he's made millions and would like to give back. He's willing to give a few total strangers a hand up. If you would like him to invest in you and you want more wealth, better health, and a drastically improved quality of life, simply click the link and tell him your story. Be honest. He'll see what he can do. I can't promise he's going to solve all of your problems, but he will make you this promise. If you have the courage to tell your story, he'll read every word and give you a valuable gift just for doing so. So go ahead. What are you waiting for? Click the link and share your story. You've all heard and you know how powerful it is to send thank you cards, notes of appreciation and gifts that build and maintain relationships. However, Writing and sending generic impersonal greetings and gifts one by one just is so overwhelming and takes so much time. 
Not to mention these days, who wants to deal with lines at the post office, running out of stamps or having to print stamps yourself? And then there's the embarrassment of missing an important date altogether. Yikes. So what can you do? If you go to marketyourbizbiz.guru, you will be able to get help with your greetings and gifts that are printed, stamped, stuffed, and mailed automatically for you. Make sure that you tell them Gabriella sent you. I would like to ask you what tips you have for our audience to help them get to greater levels of success. And I would like if you were to be able to go back and talk to that 20 year old self or some of our younger audience, is there one particular thing that you would suggest that would help them get to success that much quicker? I'm going to sound like a broken record, but find some other entrepreneurs to talk to because being an entrepreneur is incredibly lonely. And you know, mm-hmm. back when I started being an entrepreneur, things like imposter syndrome and depression and bipolar stuff that are very, very common in entrepreneurs. Nobody talked about that, but way back then right. when I was a young entrepreneur, that's becoming a lot more, you know, uh, okay to, to talk about okay. that and, and surface those issues nowadays. But um, yeah, just, you, you've got to, you know, other, they're, they're, your family doesn't understand the issues you're going through, your friends who aren't entrepreneurs, they don't understand. Certainly if you have employees, it's, you can't really talk to them about, you know, what's really bothering you and, and the fears and everything in your head. So other entrepreneurs is just a great resource. And that's, that's what I encourage any young person starting out a business to, to make sure they do. Awesome. So I'm going to open up the floor and ask you what other tips that you would share with our audience that will help them for reaching the next level in success. What tips were useful for you to create success in your own business, in your own life? So um, I think one of the most, so, so I focus on helping people, you know, not just look at growth, but look at profit. And, and, you know, there's, that's a long, I could talk about that for hours, right? But you, profit can be a dirty word for some people, um, especially uh, uh, coaches, consultants, solo entrepreneurs, you know, their, their mission is to serve people and to relay whatever expertise they have to, to others to help, you know, help others help the world. And, um, it's difficult for them to, you know, grasp that it's okay to make money doing it. Um, And so I try to, you know, one is just a mindset shift that it's okay to, you know, actually make money doing what you're doing. But it's more important from a tactical standpoint, to really look at the areas where you can increase profit. um, And, and, you know, even things like pricing, right? There's so much that you can do in pricing in terms of, you know, raising prices to make sure you're getting the real value that you have. And, and there's formulas you can look at to say, okay, I raise prices, I might lose business, but let's, let's dive into that and really look at, you know, who you're losing. Are those people, cre- you know, creating more work for you than the, the clients at the higher price that you would keep? There's things like that. And then selling, um, you know, to me, sales is, is one of the core issues for every entrepreneur. You're selling yourself, you're selling your company, you're selling yourself to vendors, to people you're trying to get credit from it's all a sales process. And that's one of been my core things as an entrepreneur these last 30 years is, you know, building sales teams, training salespeople. Um, and in almost all the businesses that I've had where I've built sales teams, I'm always hiring and training people without prior sales experience. Because to me, those people come in typically with very bad habits, a lot of mm-hmm. old school sales techniques, and especially in the environment that I, that I work a lot in now, like with coaches and consultants, you know, they don't want to be a, a salesperson. They don't want to have to read four books on sales in, in order to just be better at, you know, signing up clients, right? That's what they right. want. They want to help more people. Um, but you improve your sales skills just a tiny little bit and your results and that's and that's all profit, right? At that point, because anything you did to get in front of somebody to to try to convert them to a client, all your expense and time and effort's already there. So if you don't convert them into a client, I call it, you know, your funnel's leaking. 
um, right. then you know you, that's just lost revenue and lost money and lost opportunity. So if you get just a little bit incrementally better at being at, at sales, at selling, um, I, I, when I work with coaches, I, I refer to it as selling like you coach, meaning that you're, a coach would never show up to their first client meeting and talk 70% of the time. But that's what coaches do because they're, when they're selling, they think that you know, they have to over explain, they have to talk about their process and, you know, and, and make themselves look smart and and that kind of thing and so there's some basic things that i teach uh to coaches and consultants around selling that can make a huge impact on the you know the the bottom line on profits um so that that would be my advice is to get some sales skills get some help with selling because that can really make a dramatic impact um and and the last thing i'll say about it is that i say sales is 80 percent confidence and 20 percent art Oh. And if you think of any, you know, great artist, musician, athlete, they don't become great without first mastering some basic skills and right. they work on those basic skills and get them perspective. Those having some of those basic skills dramatically increases their confidence. And that's where they, you know, can get into being artful uh, and, and getting just better at it. So, um, you know, and that's where having a coach helps because a coach provides not only this, you know, the teaching, which is just the knowledge part, you can get that part from a book or a video or a course, but the feedback loop that a coach provides is really what's invaluable. 100%. And you just said something that reminded me, and I rarely talk about my my kid, but my kid is actually really good at roller skating, um, the the four, the quads, they call it. And the same thing happened with her. She was doing really well with the skills. And then she was learning the next skill and she wasn't getting it. And it literally was her confidence was getting shot. And the coach is the one who got her through that and got her to learn the skill. And once she got through that and learned the skill and gained the confidence that she knew she could get through it to learn the skill. So the next time she was learning a skill that she had the confidence that she knew she was capable, she just skyrocketed how quickly she was learning. Her coach was so impressed with her that she picked up skills two to three times faster than most of the other um, students because the confidence click. So you guys, this is why I was so excited to bring Jay to you today. And I know that he teaches these very things to the people that work with him. So Jay, will you let our audience know where they can find out more information about you? And remember the links are gonna be down in the show notes and they're gonna be down in the description. So social media, email, website, where can we find out more information about you? So um, my website, theprofitarchitects.com is the first place to start. Um, I also have a, a program right now available called Skip the Marketing, which is at skipthemarketing.com. And teaching some of those sales skills is exactly what we're doing in that program. Uh, so you can check that out. Um, so in, in either of those cases, you can find me easily. And is there, are you on LinkedIn or Facebook uh, or any of the other social media sites where people can reach out to you? Yeah, sure. I, I'm very easy to find with a name like Jay Fairbrother. Um, there's not many of us out there. So yeah, on, on LinkedIn is a good place to start for sure. Fantastic. So we will make sure to get that information in the notes and in the description so that people can reach out to you directly. Jay, do you have an offer that you can share with our audience today? Yeah, if you go to my website, theprofitarchitects.com, uh, you'll see a menu item where you can get what I call the story challenge. And this is an exercise. Um, it's not a challenge like some people use like five day challenges or something like that. The, the challenge word comes in is that I challenge you not just to download and read the exercise, but to actually do it. And it's helping you create stories that you can use to help sell with more authenticity and integrity and, and more, you know, in a more natural way 
um, then, you know, the alternative, which is what most people do, and they go into, you know, professor speak and corporate speak and technical jargon. And so it's using stories in the sales process. Awesome. All right, you guys. So please go take a look and click the links and find out more from Jay. He is super, super smart and knowledgeable and can help you level up to the next level of success. We'll talk to y'all soon. Hey, thanks so much for watching. We hope you got value today. We want to give a huge shout out of gratitude to our contributors. Please make sure you click the subscribe button below and don't forget to click the bell up above to get reminders when we add new content.